Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here. Welcome back to more of the Donkey Kong Land 2 playthrough. Today, we're going to finish up the rest of World 4, uh, Gloomy Gulch, with uh, this level right here. The third and final Honeycomb level, Parrot Shoot Panic. Now, this level is very interesting because uh, this is a level where you don't really do a lot of platforming. You're doing falling. <laughs> You're basically falling through the whole level. Uh, you get squawks for this level, but squawks doesn't actually fly in here. In uh, the Super NES version, this is signified by the fact that this squawks is a different color, uh, being purple as opposed to the green color that squawks normally is. In this game, I don't think you can tell as easily, but um, I think there is like a slight coloration difference. Again, it's, it's very, very slight, but yeah, with this squawks... Uh, you can't fly up, you can't shoot eggs, you're literally just dropping with this guy. But I think this is still, like, I think you get a greater sense of uh, mobility with that squawks, though. I think, anyway. It, it feels more smooth than the other squawks, but that, not, that might be just because you don't have to worry about any upward movements. In fact, that is probably the reason why you don't really have to worry about it. Uh, but yeah, this level's kind of unique. Honestly, I am actually kind of a fan of this level just because of the, uh... Just kind of the gimmick that's involved. And it's also kind of cool because if you don't want to use Squawks, uh, you can actually use Dixie as well, and Dixie also does uh, fairly good in this level too, by herself. The only problem is I think Dixie kind of has, like, a constant slow speed the whole time while... Squawks, he can fall a little faster, so, you know, if you try to ponytail twirl the whole way, it'll take a longer time to get through than just with squawks, but the fastest way to get through this level is obviously just by dropping, but with the uh, whole small screen thing, that probably wouldn't be a good idea anyway, so, yeah, probably shouldn't do that or attempt that. Unless you're feeling, like, extremely gutsy and ballsy and you know the uh, speedrun strats. In that case, you could probably get away with it, but if you're a newer player, probably not. You may want to just kind of take the easy route through. So yeah, this level has two bonuses and one hero coin. We already have the hero coin and one of the bonuses second bonus, I imagine, is going to be closer to the bottom of the level. Closer to the bottom and ending of the level. Actually, I think it's right up there. Just let me see. Can I just... Skip over here? Yep. Okay. More hooks. You know, I really don't like how hidden those hooks can be sometimes. <laughs> sometimes you're going to have to guess they're going to be there, but... I mean, hey, they, they work pretty reliably once you find them. And there we go. So I think that is going to do it for the honeycomb levels. I mean, we still have a little bit left right now, but yeah, for the most part, we're done. So hooray for being done with another level trope. We still have a couple others to explore and use, but still making some good progress, I think. Okay, so next up we have Web Woods, a level that's quite notorious in uh, Donkey Kong Country 2. It's notorious for basically being a really long level with a hero coin at the very end of the level that's on the uh, end target game. In this game, we don't have to worry about that, thank God. And I think there's only one bonus, too, so we have less to worry about. But still, it's a fairly long level, and I find that um, you'll probably find yourself looking high and low for the hero coin anyway. And it can be, um, I wouldn't say it's difficult, but 
when you're kind of exploring things with Squitter, it does kind of take a bit of time. Also, why am I yawning so much? Ugh, I'm sorry, guys. I actually recently just got back from my vacation, and, uh... Because of that, I'm trying to get back on schedule and everything. Especially after pretty much being up all night driving home, but... That's neither here nor there. Uh, but yeah, we get to be uh, Squitter for this entire level. And when I say entire level, I mean entire level, so... This is uh, definitely a long one. Also, I find that the uh, web projectile attack doesn't really go very far. Especially considering, again, how small the screen is. But we'll make do, we'll make do. But yeah, this is the stuff I kind of hate, is looking for... Looking for stuff in these pits right here. Because I don't think there is going to be anything in here, per se, but... You know at some point they're going to throw something down here in one of these pits. Because the game assumes, oh, you can get down there, so why couldn't there be anything down there? And, like, I know they usually put, like, bananas as, like, some sort of indication that there's something around, but... Still, I mean... You also have to kind of consider that the game developers probably think that some players just kind of, uh... Explore on their own, or, like, maybe... You know, they're not as good or as logical as, like, some of the best gamers are, so they wouldn't think that... Oh, well, let's just stick to the top of the screen and avoid everything. No, they'd probably, like, go down, then up, or whatever. So, they, you know, because of that, they probably don't think to put, like, bananas everywhere. But, knowing my luck, they'll probably just end up doing that anyway. So, this is all probably going to be for naught. Which is quite the shame, but what are you going to do about it? Okay, there we go. Another pit explored. Hmm. See, now that, now that, now that ba banana makes me think there's something up here. Maybe it was just trying to tell us that the N is up there. That could be it. Oh, wow, that's... I'm, like, really close to the bottom of the screen now. Okay, so there's bananas right here. Is the coin up here, then? Where the hell is this? Also, <laughs> look at the trees being cut off right there. <laughs> Very nicely done, graphic designers. Very nicely done. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so there's the hero coin. I guess there was, like, some sort of indication, but still. May not have to do that anymore, hopefully. But, because we do have a bonus level remaining, I'm still going to be looking high and low for what we're going to need. Maybe I'll go ahead and skip this part right here. We do have the G, so we are getting pretty close to the end. Hopefully, uh... Wait a minute. There it is! I see it. Ah, oh, thank God. I did not want to go through all that again. <laughs> uh, so thank thankfully they gave us what we needed at the right time. And I believe that is going to do it for Web Woods, everyone. So, say you're, uh, well, okay, now I think we're going to see Squitter again. Yeah, because I think he's going to be in two more levels at least, so never mind. We're not going to say our goodbyes to Squitter just yet, but it, definitely a temporary parting. And we're going to move on to the boss of Gloomy Gulch. We have Creepy Crow. Crow is back. And you can't really tell in this one, but, uh, this crow is supposed to be a ghost. <laughs> it doesn't look like it, but that's what he is in the SNES version. 
But yeah, so for this, you want to wait till the egg falls down, and then pretty much just do the same thing you did before. And then after you get two hits in, you have to climb up here. Watch out for the eggs. Watch out for the eggs or you'll get scrambled. And then we have the second phase. I think there's only two phases in this, though, so... I think after two more hits, we'll be fine. Oh, crap. Oh, come on. Okay, well, lesson learned. Uh, you have to actually jump on the eggs before you try to grab them in this one. Or at least for the second phase, anyway. Yeah, I think there's only two phases here, so we don't have to worry about going up another uh, section of uh, rope. So, probably a lot shorter than the SNES fight. Also, I just now put this together, but it's actually playing the final boss theme for all the bosses. How did I not notice that until now? Not that I mind, because the final boss theme is epic, but... And honestly, the, the song sounds pretty good on a handheld. So my pro uh, major props to the uh, sound developers for Rare. And yep, there we go. There we go. World 4 has been beaten and we're going to move on to World 5. Before we do, notice how we have a, another icon up here. This is Clubus Kiosk. So instead of having a location in every single world, uh, World 2 onward, uh, there's just one universal location for Clubba, and it's on the map here in between uh, World 4 and 5. So uh, we unfortunately cannot get to all the Lost World levels yet, but once we get all of the Krem coins, uh, we can definitely come back and uh, check this out and pay a visit to the Lost World. But for now, we're going to move on to the fifth world of the game. K Rules Keep. I want to say there's about six levels here gonna start out with Arctic Abyss and thank God they used in a snowbound land which is the uh, ice music for this game it's a really solid tune another one of those very kind of like atmospheric tunes beautiful pieces of music is probably the best way to define them and yeah this is uh, the first of the three ice levels that we have in this game. Uh, although this is kind of an ice slash water level. So we're going to be using Engard for quite a bit here. It seems like every animal buddy gets like one level where they're basically the uh, only animal buddy for that level. Squitter gets web woods, Ratley gets a rattle battle, um... Rambi doesn't really get all of Rambi's rumble. There are a couple levels, though, where you use Rambi pretty extensively. Like the uh, first level, Bayou, Boogie, or whatever the first level was. Bayou Blast or something. Or Barrel Bayou, one of those. Um, this is in Guards. Squawks is kind of like Rambi in a lot of respects, too. There's uh, kind of just like a couple of levels where you use them for quite a bit. I still haven't found any of the bonuses yet. Uh, there's going to be two bonuses and one hero coin here. Uh, seems like there's going to be something up here, and it's the hero coin. Although that is kind of appropriate, because that's kind of like the same location the hero coin is in the SNES version. The only difference is I think you have in guard for that, and you can actually supercharge up to it. Because the entire room is flooded. Uh, because the game did change a little bit, it didn't have to deal with that, obviously, but, you know... Potentially, that could have been a thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back down this way. Uh, 
I still have not found any bonus levels. Which does worry me to an extent. But as long as I find the second one, I mean, the first one shouldn't be too hard to find. Also, why do they keep sticking random bananas in, like, the corner of this level? I've noticed that a couple of times now. And I find it really, really strange. Like, I, I understand when they're, like, in the middle of the room, but when they're, like, in the corner like this, like, why? <laughs> why are they there? <laughs> Maybe, oh, you know what it could be? It could be to, like, a way to signify if, like, you've gotten lost or not. This level is kind of a maze, so maybe that's what they were kind of going for. Okay, I still haven't found the bonus area yet, and I think we're at the, yeah, we're at the end here. Oh, here's one of them, at least. We're going to collect the stars. Oh boy. Here go the rare developers again. Doing what they love most. Spelling the abbreviation for the game. Or at least the first two letters of the abbreviation. And yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and finish up this level then. And then just uh, go back through it again. It's probably in the first half of the level. Like, I mean, where else could it be, honestly? So yeah, I will uh, be right back, guys. Okay, so we're about at the midway point, and funnily enough, the uh, first, this first bonus is actually right down here. And I thought I looked in here I guess I didn't go over too far to the left then, so I actually could have found that early. My bad. Oh well. These things happen, guys. These things happen. And with that, we are done with Arctic Abyss, and we can move on to the next level, which is Windy Well. This is the second level that has wind mechanics, but this wind is more vertical than it is horizontal, so... As we're climbing up this mine shaft, we have to deal with uh, wind kind of pushing ourselves up and uh, just trying to make sure we avoid that, if at all possible. Got to use this mostly to kind of navigate around the bees and such. Also, I believe this level only has one bonus, and it has, of course, the always uh, appearing hero coin as well. So it shouldn't be too bad. Oh, well, there's a bonus right there. <laughs> that could probably be like a really hard bonus to find, too, because there's not really a whole lot of um, notification there, or indication there. Indication, notification, it's all the same at the end. And get out of the barrel, please. Thank you. And there we go. So let us keep going and keep climbing up this shaft. This is also the third and final mine shaft level. Still playing the uh, red hot bop music. The volcano music, which we still have to see the third of those levels too. I always think it's really cool how they make it so every level trope is used exactly three times. It really makes you think like how the game was developed. Like did they say, okay, everybody create like three levels for each trope. And then once we're done, we'll try to figure out how to structure the levels and, like, which world they're going to be in. That probably is how they did it, honestly. Maybe something like that, anyway.
Oh. oh okay. <laughs> we're okay. We're okay. <laughs> we had another con with us. Once again, need to kind of navigate through these bees. Not the bees, anything but the bees. And there we go. And we get a one-up as well, even though I think we're pretty much fully stocked at this point. What? Dungeon Danger? That's not Castle Crush. <laughs> That's Dungeon Danger. What kind of name is Dungeon Danger? So yeah, once again, because uh, Game Boy probably doesn't emulate Castle Crushing very well. Looks like we gotta deal with a uh, Dungeon of Danger, I suppose. Such a dumb name, though. I'm sorry, but my god. Dungeon Danger. Seems like they are using the castle music, though, which is good. I am definitely a fan of the castle music. It's pretty good. Oh. Well, I guess I should have uh, expected that to happen. This is dungeon danger, after all. God, do they really call this Dungeon Danger? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm like, just like... <sighs> just restating the obvious, but it's just that's just a really weird name. Anyway, making sure that I'm not missing anything. Because right there, they had a banana above the pit, so I just figured, oh, there might be something in this pit, but sure enough, there's not. It's always one of those things where whenever you talk to someone who's played the, these games a lot, they go, oh, whenever you see a line of bananas, always trust in the bananas, and then there's like... Then there's always points where, like, that doesn't work, and you're like, oh, well, I just died because of that. I suppose it's more like, follow the trail of bananas when you're sure that, like, the bonuses or whatever can be nowhere else. Also, I just died. Dungeon Danger being very true to its name, I guess. Oh, hey, there's a cannon down here. Yeah, I believe the cannonball's up here. Yep, there it is. Ugh. Those freaking uh, clasp enemies. Are, no, they're not clasp. They're cleaners. That's right. I'm thinking of something else. My bad. So yeah, we have two of the bonuses done. There's still one more bonus somewhere in here. Gotta be very, very careful with these guys. Although there is that one... 
I say as I die right there. Hold on, guys. Anyway, as I was trying to say, uh, there is that one thing I kind of taught you guys at the very end of this playthrough, but or very beginning of this playthrough, the uh, the uh, clinger enemies. You can actually uh, kill them pretty easily if you switch uh, ropes to the rope they're on at like the right time. You can just go ahead and kill them in that fashion. But since I've been trying this level, that's not really been working out the way I thought it would. And yeah, there's a bonus right here. Collect the stars. Sounds easy enough. And there we go. That is it for Dungeon Danger. So now we just have to get to the end now. Hey guys, Dungeon Danger is finally almost done. And we also just did not get all the Kong letters, but whatever. I feel like I talked about this when I did uh, Donkey Kong Land 1, or maybe another Donkey Kong game, but um, I should do a Kong letter percent playthrough, where you have to get all the Kong letters in every single game, and oh, come on, dang it. Okay, back at the end of Dungeon Danger, and guess what, guys? The danger has been overcame. This level is over, and I think I'm going to go ahead and end this uh video here so see you guys next time later folks